Welcome to our demonstration of eTapestry QuickBooks Online Integration. I appreciate all of you joining us today. My name is Jeff Hegwood, and I'm an eTapestry consultant and the owner of Sidekick Solutions. Sidekick Solutions is an independent consulting company that helps organizations like all of yours uh, get the most from eTapestry software. So first, there are some misconceptions about how data flows between eTapestry and QuickBooks. As a best practice, we recommend entering data in eTapestry first, and then transferring that data to QuickBooks. This demonstration today is going to assume that particular workflow. Second, there's two types of QuickBooks systems. There's QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Our integration and the integration that we're going to demo today is exclusive to QuickBooks Online. So we created an integration between QuickBooks Online because in our opinion, the current options for connecting ETAP and QuickBooks Online are a complete waste of time. There's two methods that most of you are probably using now. The first method is to enter data in eTapestry manually and then enter the data again in QuickBooks Online. This is the infamous double data entry scenario uh, that many of you are probably familiar with. The second option is to enter data in eTapestry and then import that data into QuickBooks Online via an Excel spreadsheet or CSV file. But that process requires a third party QuickBooks add on and does not come with QuickBooks out of the box. So if you're feeling the pain of those two options, you're, you're not alone. We know some organizations that are completing these manual actions daily and even weekly. In fact, we at Sidekick Solutions used to enter data manually into QuickBooks Online before we finally developed integrations for our systems too. The bottom line is we get it. There's gotta be a better way to do this. So our integration automatically creates customers and sales receipts in QuickBooks Online for new transactions that you enter in eTapestry. This is done in real time in about every 15 to 20 minutes. So that means there's no more double data entry. You can simplify reconciliation of your deposits in QuickBooks. You can improve the accuracy of your reports, and we can finally get accounting and fundraising on the same page between two separate systems. So let's go ahead and dive in and show you how this actually works between eTapestry and QuickBooks. So let's go ahead and go into eTapestry and create these gifts. So I'm going to search for Han Solo. I'm gonna find his account. I'm gonna to go to his journal and I'm gonna create a gift. And this is gonna be a large gift. It's going to be a gift of $2,000. So it's today, enter $2,000, whoops. This is a major gift that I'm gonna to put towards my restricted fund. I have a restricted fund in here. I can select a campaign and an approach, and I'll put a note in here that says, um, this is a major gift and we'll need a follow-up. He wrote a check. Let's say the check date was three days ago and the check number was some number. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save that gift. Now let's go to Bugs Bunny and add a couple of gifts for him. So I'm gonna add two gifts. The first gift I'm going to add is a cash gift of $20. And this is going to be to my unrestricted fund. And we'll just put test in the note. And let's add one more gift. Of $50. 
Let's add this to the general program. And let's make this a credit card. Okay, so I've entered three gifts, two for Bugs Bunny, one for Han Solo. Okay, so let's go into QuickBooks and see our transactions. So I'm gonna to go to Sales, and you can see that I have two transactions here, and you can see there's plenty of test transactions, but if you get through uh, the density here, there is a transaction for Bugs Bunny here of $50. There's a transaction for Bugs Bunny here of $20. And then there's a gift from Han Solo of $2,000 here. So let's go ahead and click on one of these and see what happened. So you can see that I have the name of the account and then a number. The number actually relates to the account number in eTapestry. Because this is a one-way sync, you can see the account number here is 78 and 78 here. We use a custom string of text in QuickBooks so that each subsequent sales receipt can get matched to the proper account. So that's the convention that we use. There are other conventions that we can use to um, guarantee that there are no duplicates in QuickBooks, but this is an easy format. You can see that his address has been written here. The date has been copied over. The payment method and reference number have been listed here. I'll get to the deposit to account in a second. You can see that his gift was attached to the restricted fund in eTapestry, which matches the product or service of restricted. I put a memo down here, which is the note from the eTapestry transaction. I've added a custom description, so I know the journal entry reference ID should I need to go back into eTapestry and look that up. And then you can see the amount here. At the same time, this also created a customer. in QuickBooks, and you can see his sales receipt listed here. And you can see the account information added to his customer record in QuickBooks. Now at this point, you notice that when we took a look at the sales receipt, these sales receipt were, receipts were bucketed to the undeposited funds account. Now this is a, a feature in QuickBooks Online that allows us to reconcile deposits as they go into our income accounts um, and also our bank account. And how this works is that we create a new bank deposit and we can simply select the transactions associated with the deposit. We can select the account uh, that it's being deposited to. In this case, I don't have a bank account connected to QuickBooks Online, so we're going to deposit to an uncategorized asset account. I can select the date of my deposit. I can select my transactions. Let's say John Smith was not a part of this deposit. You can see that my deposit amount is $2,070. And when I click Save and Close, these transactions will de be deposited and removed from my undeposited funds queue. So now you can see that these have been removed. That action places those transactions in my income accounts within my P&L statement. So here, if I go into my restricted income account, you can see that Han Solo's transaction of $2,000 has been categorized there. So there are some questions that normally come up about this integration. Um, as those are the basics, there are some things that fall outside of the norm of everyday data entry with eTapestry and QuickBooks. So the first one is how do we reconcile credit card fees? How are those handled and do those come through the integration? They do not come through the integration. Um, when you enter a transaction in eTapestry, let's say um, we're gonna enter another 
let's say let's add a fifty dollar transaction to Han Solo, and let's make it a credit card transaction. When you enter a transaction in eTapestry, and let's say you're processing this gift through Blackbaud Merchant Services or PayPal or Stripe or some other payment processor, maybe your bank, you're entering the gift as the total amount in eTap. Only later will you reconcile the credit card fees. So let's go ahead and save this transaction and we will go to bank deposit. So let's say that I think Blackbaud Merchant Services deposits every two weeks, other payment processors process at other schedules or other time periods. So when the funds are deposited in your bank account, you would simply make a deposit, select the transactions associated with that deposit. Let's say both of these were credit cards. Let me flip this. And then you can simply subtract out the credit card fees from the deposit because the deposit amount to your bank account is net the credit card fees. So let's go ahead and select Blackbaud Merchant Services. I have a credit card fees expense account in my chart of accounts. Say the payment method is the credit card. And let's say that we're subtracting $10 in fees. Um, that'd be a pretty hefty amount, but roll with it for this demo. And you can see that your deposit is now $45. So if I go ahead and save and close that, now I can go to my P&L and I can see that my $10 of credit card fees are being deducted from my income, so all of my statements will reconcile. The other question that we get often is whether or not QuickBooks Online can map classes from eTapestry. So the answer is yes. This test database does not have classes activated, but we can add a class to every transaction coming through to QuickBooks Online. Another question that we get is how we handle refunds. So refunds are relatively rare um, in any e tapestry and they're done via a reversal. So if I go to Han Solo, and let's say I wanna refund his $50 transaction. First, I have to finalize that transaction. And then I can reverse it. This creates an offset, offsetting negative transaction of $50 so that my eTapestry accounts balance. Refunds do not get sent to QuickBooks Online via our integration, however, we can set up an email trigger to send your accountant, your bookkeeper, or you specifically, an email saying that a new reversal has been entered in eTapestry. That would then prompt you to either refund or reconcile that transaction in QuickBooks so the two systems match. We feel like an email trigger is a good alternative to a comprehensive integration because refunds are relatively rare. Um, so we use an email trigger as a way to notify of a change that needs to be made in QuickBooks. One other thing, so sometimes there are special procedures that you need to run um, for your end of year reporting, your audits, various other situations. You may need a list of all transactions that are greater than a certain amount for special reporting purposes, or maybe you need a report on all income by state so that you can report um, accurately by state. We can hook up a Google spreadsheet or an Office 365 Excel spreadsheet off the back end of your QuickBooks integration and populate all transactions entered from eTapestry into a spreadsheet. So if you wanted to group by state, we can grab that or if you wanted to filter by amount, we could simply find all transactions that are, say, 
greater than a thousand dollars and you can see there are three transactions the other item is that I know that some people don't use the deposit feature in QuickBooks Online, and that's perfectly fine. Um, we can actually set, as the transaction comes in, we can actually set the deposit to account for each transaction. This bypasses the deposit function in QuickBooks and is not 100% recommended by us because we do think that the deposit reconciliation process is a benefit um, for keeping your, your books organized. But it is an option. We can set the deposit to account as transactions come in. So that's the QuickBooks Online integration. Um, if you're ready to get started with this type of integration for your organization, here's how it works from, from our end in terms of a partnership. Setup is free. We set up the integration between eTapestry and QuickBooks Online for you. It requires no technical expertise on your end. There's a monthly subscription for us to keep the integration active. There's no long-term contracts. It's month to month. You can cancel any time, and we take care of all the technicals, including maintenance, support, hosting, and monitoring of your integration, and even identifying when the APIs, the connection points on the QuickBooks Online side or the eTapestry side throw an error. There's no limits to the number of transactions that you can process through the integration. If you're excited about this integration, we can get you set up as soon as next week. It takes about an hour or less of total time commitment on your end to get set up. We run tests before we set the integration active so that you can feel confident that it's doing what you'd like it to do. So interestingly enough, QuickBooks Online isn't where we ended with integrations. We actually have integrations with many other apps that uh, many of you may be using. Some common ones include MailChimp, PayPal, Eventbrite, Donately, Shopify, and we even build custom integrations with apps that you might be using um, that aren't on this list. So I appreciate everyone attending today. Um, I hope that we can save you some time, energy, some stress, and connect your eTapestry and QuickBooks Online systems. All right, so we have a few questions that came through. Let me go ahead and answer those. So there's a question, how does QuickBooks handle payments to pledges? So everything that comes from eTapestry is a received transaction. So that includes gifts, recurring gifts and pledge payments. All of those are entered as sales receipts into QuickBooks Online, um, but we do aggregate all of them coming from eTapestry, so all of that revenue-based transaction volume gets into QuickBooks Online. There's another question, does the name of the fund in eTap need to match exactly to that of QuickBooks Online? No, it does not. Um, we can create mappings um, from funds to QuickBooks Online that are not perfect matches. Question, can you address the, discuss the security of the data in regards to this process solution? Yep, so we encrypt the data going um, from eTapestry to our middle integration, and then we encrypt the data going out. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any other questions, so we'll go ahead and um, close down for today. If there are any other questions, feel free to send me an email. Um, again, my email address is here, jeff at sidekicksolutionsllc.com. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it.